Welcome to High Fine Stage Dives, a SoCan licensed podcast coming to you weekly from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Each week, I talk about a song that's been stuck in your head at one point or another, or stuff you've never heard before. Welcome to this musical journey. Hello and welcome back to High Fine Stage Dives, coming to you from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It is fucking beautiful here right now. It's uh, December. It's almost Christmas time. Um, right now, we should be sitting in about five feet of snow, and it should be minus 40 from where I'm at. And that is fucking cold. And if you don't know, minus 40 in Celsius is the same thing in Fahrenheit. So, cold as motherfucking balls. Am I not right? I am right. <laughs> so, today, we will be delving into Slipknot. Uh, when I did my research on this i really uh took a left turn and <laughs> really went into cory taylor the reason being is because slipknot was like a crazy band for me well it was a whole new metal thing and but they were just they stuck out they stuck out more it wasn't like a whole limp biscuit thing i don't have anything against the early limp biscuit but i have a soft spot for that new metal when it first came out but yeah so <laughs> cory taylor he uh influenced me in a lot of ways i'll get into that later after we do feature song so let's talk about slipknot they're from des moines iowa uh, new metal groove metal metal uh founded in september 95 so the current nine the nine uh cory taylor mick thompson jim root guys looks like a fucking pirate jim root's crazy uh, craig jones sid wilson sean cran he's one of the founding members i can never say his name right chris fenn that is Clown 3. I got to see them, well, but the last time I saw them in concert, he was giving everybody the finger. He's the clown with the dick nose. He threw a stick directly at me, trying to like whip it at me because I gave him the finger to hold up, and I caught it. And when I caught it, he pointed at me. You could tell he fucking smiled under that mask. He gave me the finger again and saluted me, and he was out. Someone tried stealing that stick from me right out of my hand. I turned around and gave him a death look and said I fucking knocked her teeth in. They didn't take the stick. Okay, Alessandro... Venturella, I'm sorry I butchered your name. He is bass player who replaced Paul Gray and Jay Weinberg. Now, if that name sounds familiar, I'll get into that later. Paul Gray uh, passed away. He unfortunately overdosed on fentanyl and... I can't remember what the other one. Fentanyl, man. Fuck that drug. Whoever invented that can jump off a short bridge. That's really high in the air. I'm making no sense. Whatever. Um... He was uh, shortly, he was the bass player. He was shortly replaced by Donnie Steele, who left in December 12, 2013. Sorry, who left during the recording of the Grey album. And then uh, Joey, the drummer, Joey Jordison, that guy was a great drummer. He also left. Uh, he has other bands. I cannot remember their names right now, but they're more punkish. Joey was an amazing drummer. The things that he could do was, was bonkers. Then he was placed by Jay, Jay Weinberg, Max Weinberg's son. Max Weinberger used to play drums for Conan O'Brien. He was their uh, their band leader. So Jay himself has played for Bruce Springsteen, filling for his dad, who used to play for Springsteen and Conan O'Brien. Uh, he also played for Madball, Against Me, and Settled in Slipknot. I think he does well, very well. Uh, I mean, his dad, come on. His dad was a crazy drummer, so it, I think it just kind of worked. Alessandro Vit... Alessandro. What is that going to call him? Alessandro. Uh, he's a musician from Britain and a guitar tech. This is crazy. He was a lead guitar player, and he he's never played drums. Or drums? What the fuck? He's never played bass. His first time playing bass was with Slipknot. Kind of like... Uh, that's, I played bass a little bit in my early career as a musician when I was younger, uh, mostly guitar. Uh, he's a lead guitar player. I dabble in lead guitar player. I can hold my own. I'm not like a, a fucking Steve I or anything like that or Shred Machine. I hold my own. Um, but he plays bass for them. He was spotted because of his tattoos. He was out because they were trying to keep it a secret who it was. They let it go. But he was a guitar tech for Brent Hines of Mastodon, the band Coheed and Cambria, Architects and Fight Star. It's kind of weird to go from like a, a guitar technician slash musician lead guitar player and like teching it out. Like, well, I guess I mean like I uh, I like the nerdy part of it too. I tech out on my guitars too. Like I, I mod all my stuff, which is it's super fun. I guess <laughs> it makes sense. Kind of a 
a weird thing. I'd, I'd, I'd like to meet this guy. Now that I think about it, our stories are kind of the same. He's just across the pond, as they call it, in Britain. Well, from Britain, and tours around a Slipknot, playing awesome music, doing crazy things in a crazy get-up. Remember the first time I saw them? They opened with, uh, I believe it was the Deftones, Coal Chamber, and I never remember the damn, it was the Canadian band. I feel like, fuck. I wish I could remember. I'm going to figure it out, and then, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I should do it in a, a can- Canadiana version of this, which I will do. We just all Canadian bands. Maybe ones that I saw. Anyways, we'll get into that. <laughs> I digress. I will be featuring Vermilion Part 2. The reason why I'm going to feature that song is it's not the first song I heard from them. It is just, I like the juxtaposed position of what we're listening to right now. That, oh, to that Corey Taylor actually singing. And that's what brought me down the rabbit hole of Corey Taylor. His voice is <laughs> unbelievable from screaming to singing, to his lyrics. The guy is just... uh, I always say if I could sing like one person, or if I had to choose for the rest of my life who I would sing like, it would be Corey Taylor. Just because the guy's range is effing nuts. Like, he can grunt and groan and scream. The guy can also fucking sing. He has a great voice. So, I'm going to feature Vermilion Part 2, just to show the difference. So... I'll play it right now. We'll get into that. And then when we come back, we'll get into me seeing the band. I'll start it out with me seeing the band for the first time and tell that story. I think I've told that story. I've told that story a few times <laughs> in the last little while. Anyways, this is so this is Vermilion Part 2. Enjoy it. It's a great song. I'll get, I'll get into all that other stuff later. But yeah, here it is.
And that was Bimmerlian Part 2. So you can see what I'm, I'm talking about, about the weird, you know, from this to that and the song before it. I'm looking at my playlist right now. The song that's going to play after is called Snuff. It's another great song. So we'll see, we'll see where this all trans, transpires to. And we'll, uh, we'll take it as it is. So the first time I ever heard Slipknot, their self-titled album, Slipknot, was apparently in 1999. So I was only 19. That's how old I am. Um, it was in a small town 20 minutes from Edmonton called Morinville. Be my old my stomping grounds, I guess. My friend Christy actually introduced me to them. They're like, check out this band. It's really crazy. I'm like, wow. First song I ever heard. I had to go back and like listen to <laughs> a bunch of their songs, but it was Wait and Bleed. Great fucking song. Love it. Uh, Corey's voice. Like... His voice has evolved along the way, and he changed his voice uh, screaming styles because of singing, and he just, the evolution, it, it happens, right? Everything changes when you're, just, when you're doing music. Uh, when he actually started singing this stuff, it was pretty cool. I would actually later on find Slipknot, or uh, sorry, uh, Stone Sour. That opened a whole new bag of tricks for myself with Corey Taylor, hence this rabbit hole we're in right now that I went down. Dude's voice, holy fuck, he can scream. He can sing, gets these mean, like powerful, lower, raspier voice. It's, it's, it's. I love it. Like, I think his voice is amazing. A lot of people don't like him. A lot of people do. But I guess I think that's just when you get on top and you, you hit a certain plateau, I guess, of or a, a peak where you're at and what you can achieve. Uh, people are gonna be, you know, envious, also jealous. So it comes hand in hand, the garbage that comes with it, right? Uh, Stone Sour was pretty cool. Him and Jim Root, good pairing. They had a falling out. Uh, Jim Root actually quit uh, Stone Sour, and I guess it made it a little awkward in Slipknot for a little while. I don't know how that is now, but just how it goes. Things happen. People leave. People come and go and stuff like that. And yes, this is me vamping. <laughs> Apparently, my research bringing you guys content. Uh, Corey start, uh, was working in a sex shop before he started with uh, Slipknot, you know, called the, an adult emporium. So fill those whips, chains, all that good stuff. Hey, man, got to pay the bills, right? He has battled depression, alcoholism, and drug use his whole life. Gone through some major shit, uh, suicide attempts. Finally, in the end, choosing life and family over it all. Uh, and you can hear it in his lyrics, the stuff he sings about. Snuff is actually a song about an ex. Paul Gray helped him change it to what it was, the meaning of it. And now he dedicates that song to Paul Gray. Him and Paul Gray were became really, really, really close, close friends. And it uh, devastated Corey when Paul died. Basically what it came down to is uh, family. So he finally decided he would do it. Met his dad finally. Dad was pretty cool. Um, I think like uh, reading about it too, like I knew the past of Corey Taylor a little, a little bit, not as much as I thought I did. Coming from a family that also has mental health and alcoholism, coming from that kind of stuff, it hit home. It was, it was really deep. So if anybody's listening to this, and I used music in a big bad way as a way to get myself mentally focused and mentally straight I hope it helps and if, as if someone's listening to this right now and they're thinking holy shit you know I could talk to somebody just do talk to somebody fuck message me and I'll, I'll listen like I don't know if I can help but I'll try maybe I'll say something that'll get you to go get help from somebody or maybe there's someone that you can talk to just talk to them man and chicks men women I don't care just if you need to talk to somebody you have those thoughts go fucking talk to someone please it's not a fucking joke do it right now it might feel real fucking hard but just go do it man or woman you know i've seen some shit i've experienced some shit i've done some shit we've all been there we've all done it we it's, it's there the help is there so go do it please so let's switch this back to a little more upbeat this is the song this is snuff this actually is about a lot of fucked up shit and it's it is what it is you know we all go through shit some of us more than others um so it turns out mr taylor after finding his way through the darkness and coming out on top he's a huge fucking comic book nerd and like toy nerd 
And he actually wrote his own comic. It's called House of Golden Bones. I can't remember exactly how many comics are out or what it's about. I haven't really checked it out. I really should. I haven't, though. He's also done some horror movie stuff. I don't remember exactly what, but he has. He, uh... <laughs> I watched a video of him. Just before this, I watched a video of him because I was checking some shit out. And he, like... I mean, obviously he has the money. He goes into the... He, he knows, like, all the stores. When the delivery days are. He's calling ahead to see what they got. And he fucking just unloads. It's great. He unloads the store. He just buys shit. It's fucking awesome. So I first saw... Slipknot in a small little venue. I don't even maybe a thousand people, maybe two thousand. I don't know. I was only fucking nineteen or twenty at the time, and I was legitimately maybe fucking four feet away from the band. Enough room for a security guard and a person, and then this little stage, and fucking Slipknot was on it. The fucking <laughs> they're on hydraulics. The clown, clown, clown one, and, or clown three, and Sean. I fuck, man. These guys are all over the fuck. My like, I'd never seen anything like this in my entire life, and I'm experiencing it. Like, I, I, I saw their like, I pictured, you know, I saw what they looked like on their album covers, and then to fucking see them in real life and do this crazy shit and so goddamn close. They were so close that you could hear the hydraulics from the percussion setups. With smashing the bats with the kegs and stuff like you could hear the hydraulics moving it was nuts to see them that close was like holy shit <laughs> I made a mistake when I went to that a concert and I ate a whole bunch of food earlier in the day and um, I think it was Subway I don't know exactly I don't remember exactly but I got squished a few times and I really had to poop so I had no choice I had to poop in a concert it was fucking disgusting yucky i don't recommend it in any way whatsoever <laughs> cory taylor amazing dude spider-man freak by the way he has a spider-man tattoo but he, that's what he grew up with this is kind of cool like when you dig into it it's pretty rad the stuff that you come up with hearing like snuff like we just listened to and hearing like, he does some crazy ass covers uh he actually inspired me to start singing and like actually start singing and trying to better myself as a, a vocalist because he could do all that stuff but hearing his covers like he does some really crazy covers he does wicked game by chris isaac the way he does it is fucking great i try to copy it can't exactly like i when i first started i tried copying him but then i just realized that you know you, you gotta do your own thing but it brought me to that place for me to actually be able to sing and push myself out of my my vocal limit and finding my vocal limit to see where and i could go and where i couldn't go so yeah so yeah, that was Slipknot. That was my rabbit hole of Corey Taylor. I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, uh, mental health is no joke. If you guys need help, man, if you're listening to this, send me a message. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Hit me up. And if I have to, I, I'll see what I can do. I can't promise you anything. And maybe I can point you in the right direction where you got to go. I just wanted to end with that because, well, put that in there because it's not a joke. And Corey Taylor, thank you. You opened a lot of doors for myself. Slipknot, thank you. You've opened a lot of doors for myself musically and mentally. <laughs> Bring me to that place that I know, you know, music. It's a motherfucker, and I love it. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. It means a lot to me that you guys listen, and I know you guys are listening because I see the numbers, and it's fucking mind-boggling. So I still, I, I just, I still don't get it. But thank you. Um, I'll keep doing this as long as you guys keep listening, which is fucking really rad. Music. Listen to it. Always makes everything better. It'll inspire you. It'll make you think twice about what you're doing. It's a soundtrack to life. It, it just It's there. It's amazing. Do it. Love it. Love you guys. Hope you love what I'm doing. Stay rad and talk to you soon. I'm your host, Ivan. Until next time, this is High Five Stage Dives. Thank you again for listening to High Fi and Stage Dives. It means the world to me. I'm glad you could come on this journey with me, and we'll keep doing it every week. Subscribe, rate, and review, all that good stuff, and keep listening to music because it only makes life better. And we'll see you on the flip side. Stay rad. <laughs>